Are you a righty or a lefty? A child throwing a ball. Looks like she has a mean right. Both arms, great. On the face of it, a simple act. Oh, it's a curveball. But for four-year-old Hannah Moan, this is a milestone. <laughs> I see. I see a lot of things when I look at her. Um, I see a miracle. I see a spitfire uh, with a lot of personality and a lot of determination. Hannah was born with a neuromuscular disease, arthrogryposis, which makes her joints curve and her muscles extremely weak. She can't lift her arms very high without help. We knew about five months into the pregnancy that something was not right. We are sat down in a room and told that uh, they did not believe she would survive birth and um, that we should really think about what we wanted done and make arrangements for, you know, the day that she were to be born. Hannah survived, but with severe challenges and a long road ahead. When we saw my pediatrician for one of her first visits, she said even if her legs don't work well enough for her to walk, she said the biggest thing that we need to work on is making sure that her hands and arms are working to the fullest extent because if she has the use of her hands and arms, she'll be able to care for herself. That has always kind of stuck with me. Her chance at a normal life came at 18 months when she arrived at the DuPont Children's Hospital in Wilmington, Delaware. It's a leading hospital in the United States. She began using a device the hospital designed called the Rex. Robotic arms made entirely from 3D printing. The Rex, which stands for Wilmington Robotic Exoskeleton, most of the kids that we deal with have uh, neuromuscular uh, issues that affect their ability to raise their arms. Oh. So they have a lot of difficulty doing typical activities of daily living. At his hospital lab, engineer Whitney Sample shows us how the Rex comes together, from design to construction. What you see on the screen here is all of the parts needed to make one patient's pair of Rexes, so this is all the plastic parts. So I could queue it up uh, in the afternoon before I leave and come back the next morning and have everything printed. The magic happens in a printer that heats up to about 200 degrees Celsius. Everything you see on this plate took 17 and a half hours to print. The components are carefully cleaned. If you start at the base of the support material, you can get inside that honeycomb pretty quick and pull most of it out. The 3D printed pieces are then put together to form the Rex. What can take the most amount of time is the fitting process when we actually go and fit and we install the Rex on the jacket. Then we also have an arm trough and that would get mounted there like so. You look at about a day, a day and a half of work for something like that, that used to take me nine months to a year. <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's huge. Even after 25 years of designing devices for those with disabilities, Whitney Sample still gets emotional when children thank him for the difference he's making. She had a uh, school project to write a uh, little story on uh, who their hero was, and, excuse me, she, uh, surprised me with, uh, with that. It was tough, it was hard to, uh, <laughs> as it is now, hard to kind of keep a, uh, a straight face. I mean, I, I'm looking at it saying, but they can't get up to here. And the family is looking at it saying, but they can get to here, and they couldn't before. And that just, you know, keeps me in perspective. They've been using it actually with her at school as well for different projects. Arthrogryposis affects one in 3,000 children born in the United States, according to the American Association of Neuromuscular and Electrodiagnostic Medicine, AANEM. The DuPont Children's Hospital says it sees a little more than 30 new cases every year. Dr. William McKenzie is chair of the orthopedics department. We treat all spectrums of orthopedic disease. 3D printing 
um, is allowing us to build devices very precisely. When we can put small motors in these joints that the child would control with either a twitch of a muscle or perhaps a laser, but we see that that is the future of the Rex. And the device has helped improve Hannah's movements even when she's not using it. You know, she's gaining muscle strength in her arms that she hasn't had. It definitely teaches her, you know, things with different textures and colors and, you know, shapes and where things go and, and how things move and how things work. The future of 3D printing may lie even beyond the medical field. This is the next industrial revolution in, in my mind, in a lot of people's minds. Uh, if you can think of a material, if you can think of a process, somebody has adapted the 3D printing uh, philosophy to that process and they're going with it. Uh, nearly every industry is getting touched by it. The sky is the limit. The sky may be the limit too for Hannah, with a loving family surrounding her, and a big brother who's her biggest champion. And he's a great big brother to her, and I feel blessed because I'm her mom. And I was chosen to be part of her journey. We're just on the journey with her. <laughs> fit in there? My, 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 my. my hope is that, you know, she grows up to be as independent as she can. I had, I'd love to see her go to college. With how sassy she is and how much she likes to be in charge, she might run for president for some <laughs> someday, who knows? Um, but I really, you know what, I, I really feel like she's going to go far no matter what path she chooses. Hi, 